Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News at 7 p.m. on LA56. Dangerous conditions outside as another strong Santa Ana wind blows through Southern California. New water restrictions from the Metropolitan Water Board, the drought fuel decision that will affect hundreds of thousands of families. LA's most famous cat, the mountain lion known as P22, has moved on after camping out for a while under a Los Feliz home. Good evening, I'm Rudy Bay Shabazi. I'm Mark Brown. David and Colleen are off. This is Eyewitness News on LA 56, LA's only live local newscast at 7 p.m. First off tonight, dangerous winds whipping up across Southern California. Which areas will be hardest hit? Danny Romero is here now. He's in for Jonathan Novak to update us. Danny. All right, thanks very much, Mark and Rudy Bay. I'll tell you what, we've got the place to watch here. Uh, and many things to cover, the winds and the very dry conditions. So let's talk about the red flag warnings. that will be a major part of our weather picture here in the next couple of days. Uh, wind advisories are certainly going on. The red flag warnings are going on as well. In the L.A. San Fernando Valley, this is going on tomorrow morning, kicking in about 5 a.m., going through Thursday night. So all these areas in that kind of rose color are going to be under these red flag warnings. So we'll see those, in effect, all starting tomorrow morning and continuing through Thursday. The winds are strong as well. The strongest ones being the high wind warnings. These are these kind of gold areas. And so these high wind warnings are in effect now through Thursday afternoon, 3 p.m. there for the uh, L.A. County Mountains up around Ventura County as well. We're going to have that high wind warning in effect now through Thursday at 3 in the afternoon. We'll see that as part of the weather picture. And that's going to be the winds and the very dry conditions. Now, the wind advisory is not quite as strong winds, but still gusts in that 45-mile-per-hour category or all these kind of beige-colored areas. So here are the San Gabriel Valley. See down to the beach areas, the coastal spots. We're going to see a wind advisory in effect, again, kicking in tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. through Thursday afternoon as well. So these winds are certainly going to be strong. The temps are going to jump up, too. Right now, they're kind of on the mild side. Very nice numbers here on a Tuesday early evening. 72 in Ontario now, 71 for Fullerton. Santa Ana checks in at 67 degrees with cool coast temps at 64 in Santa Monica. Now, the big change in our weather. I'll tell you about that when I come back to the seven-day in just a little bit. Right now, Mark and Rudabay. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Danny. You can track the changes in the weather with the free ABC7 Mega Doppler weather app. You can download it from the iTunes App Store or Google Play. Search Mega Doppler. The Metropolitan Water District will slash water deliveries across the region by 15 percent this summer. The agency voted on the cuts today. The MWD sells imported water to more than two dozen local agencies that serve about 19 million people. The cutbacks are an effort to force communities to step up conservation efforts in the midst of the state's drought crisis. District officials say the cuts are necessary to stretch supplies. They take effect in July. LA Mayor Eric Garcetti has wrapped up his second State of the U the State of the State uh, City rather address. He focused on the state's record drought along with other issues. Eyewitness News reporter Alex Michelson is live at Cal State Northridge, where a large crowd gathered to hear his speech. Alex, State of the City. Some, some, some in those crowd are hoping that he one day will deliver a State of the Union or State of the State, but it's all about the state of the city today. The speech may be over, but uh, many of the city leaders remain here at Cal State Northridge enjoying a street festival of sorts with a bunch of free food provided by different restaurants around here. They're all discussing the speech. It really addressed a potpourri of some of the biggest challenges facing Los Angeles. And the state of our city is strong. Mayor Eric Garcetti says L.A. is leading the way on Governor Brown's mandatory 25 percent water cuts. Governor, I can report to you today that with just 10 percent of the state's population, Los Angeles will reach half of your entire statewide goal by the end of this year. The mayor is trying to avoid disastrous scenes like these from 1994's Northridge quake by retrofitting older, potentially deadly buildings. On traffic, the mayor announced a new partnership with Waze. Now when you open Google Maps or Waze, your smartphone will show you where the city has closed a road for repairs or for a movie shoot. So now you'll have to find a new excuse when you're late to dinner with your mother-in-law. The mayor also announced Uber and Lyft will soon be able to pick you up at LAX. $10 million more for affordable housing and 5,000 new trash cans. So today I'm announcing our city's Clean Streets Initiative or CSI Los Angeles, as I like to call it. Outside the speech, a union of mostly sanitation workers protest for more jobs and higher wages. We want the mayor to fix the city of Los Angeles. It's broken. An interesting side note about the power of free food. Many of those protesters who were protesting before the speech were actually enjoying some of the free food provided by the mayor's friends after the speech. 
Uh, now, as for the Uber and Lyft portion of that uh, at LAX, that's expected to be done by this summer. That's a big deal to a lot of folks. We're going to have more on that coming up tonight on, uh, at 11 o'clock on ABC7 when we rejoin you. But for now, reporting live from Northridge, Alex Michelson, ABC7. I wouldn't listen. Alex, thank you. A group of protesters took to the streets of downtown Los Angeles this afternoon protesting police brutality. The group called Stop Mass Incarceration Network began their small protest in front of LA Police Headquarters at 1st and Main. They later interrupted traffic blocking the Blue Line tracks at Washington Boulevard for about two hours. Protesters were given an order to disperse. Those who did not comply within 20 minutes were arrested and they will face misdemeanor charges of unlawful assembly. The mountain lion who camped out under a Los Feliz house is back in Griffith Park. That's not a problem most of us will ever face, but skunks, raccoons, and the like getting stuck under houses is pretty common. So what can you do? Eyewitness News reporter Sid Garcia takes a closer look. When most of us were asleep, P-22, the celebrity mountain lion of Griffith Park, slipped out of his den underneath this Los Feliz home. It was his home away from home in one of L.A.'s more exclusive neighborhoods. It's doing what mountain lions do. It's going into a den and hiding out. I mean, it was, you know, this was like the Ritz-Carlton for mountain lions. <laughs> P-22's den was discovered after a worker installing a security system at the house came face to face with the 130 pound cat. One looks more terrified than the other. The one speaking says, Mr. Jason, you have a mountain lion in your house. And I thought he was punking, frankly. And then we got into this dialogue. The other guy's totally terrified. And then the other guy didn't even know what it was. He was just scared because the first guy was so scared because he had gone into the crawl space and came face to face with the mountain lion. Once confirmed, P-22 was no longer under the house. Work was immediately done to close off the crawl space. A lot of us live in areas close to wildlife, and anything from a mountain lion to a skunk or a squirrel can get into a crawl space. But there's a simple and inexpensive thing to do to keep them out of your home. I would just uh, put, a, put up a board with nails. Just you know, They're not going to challenge a board on a wall. I would just just block that access so they can't get in and out. And it could be, I wouldn't use plastic, I'd use a material like a wood so they can't get in or out. It's unlikely, according to Fish and Wildlife, P-22 will come back to this Los Feliz neighborhood to set up a new den. He probably had a pretty bad day yesterday. And, you know, best case scenario, we hope he doesn't want to be around people as much because it can only be bad for him. P-22 wears a collar where Fish and Wildlife are able to track him. And we are told he is so deep into Griffith Park right now, he is far away from people. In Griffith Park, I'm Sid Garcia. ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Orange County animal care officials are trying to capture an Egyptian goose that was spotted with an arrow in its neck in the Anaheim Hills area. The animal appears to be okay despite having the arrow in its neck. Officials say the arrow missed all vital organs, but they fear the wound could get infected. They say it's very likely the goose was intentionally shot. A Culver City man is being held on $8 million bail today in connection with the disappearance of a 15-year-old girl with autism. The teen was found early yesterday and reunited with her mother. The suspect is 33-year-old Samuel Robert Duran, Jr. He's facing a number of charges, including rape. Detectives are trying to figure out how he met the victim. The teen vanished while walking in her Mar Vista neighborhood about three weeks ago. Charges filed today against the man accused of carjacking a taxi and leading police on a bizarre pursuit through South L.A. last week. Derek Bogar is, in fact, charged with three separate carjackings. In the one involving the taxi, investigators say he forced the driver to smoke a cigarette laced with a drug. The chase lasted two hours and included close encounters with a train, pedestrians, and even one of our news vans before officers used a pit maneuver on the Prius to stop it and arrest the suspect. President Obama is pledging $200 million in humanitarian aid to people displaced by ISIS in Iraq. He made the financial commitment during a meeting today at the White House with Iraqi Prime Minister Hader al-Abadi. He had questioned more military support to defeat the Islamic State group. The president says Iraq and U.S.-led coalition have recovered about a fourth of the Iraqi territory captured by ISIS militants. The impression is not that the United States is somehow moving back into Iraq, but rather that the United States is uh, uh, doing what's ultimately best for the Iraqi people, even as we uh, join in fighting a common enemy. 
Meantime, at least 20 civilians were killed in a string of car bombs around Baghdad. They happened as Iraqi security forces stopped an attack by ISIS on the country's largest oil refinery. A Senate panel has unanimously approved a bill giving Congress a say on a nuclear deal with Iran. Democrats and Republicans reached a compromise on the measure. The bill sets up a 30-day congressional review period and requires the Obama administration to regularly update Congress on Iran's compliance. During that time, the president can't waive any sanctions that Congress has levied on Iran. The bill next goes to the Senate. The president is likely to sign it in its new form. And the White House today announced President Obama's plan to remove Cuba from the list of state sponsors of terrorism. That follows President Obama's weekend meeting with Cuban President Raul Castro in Panama. The president sent a message to Congress saying Cuba's government has not provided any support for international terrorism over the last six months. And Cuba has provided assurances that it will not support international terrorism in the future. Hillary Clinton took her run for the White House to Iowa today, while newly announced Republican presidential candidate Senator Marco Rubio took no time pointing out their differences. ABC's Karen Travers reports. It was a low-key start for Hillary Clinton. Drink my way across Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try both your chai and your caramello, and maybe a glass of water, too. Her first appearance in Iowa today came at a small-town coffee shop. We were pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I think she's got my vote. Later, she met with a small group of students and teachers at an Iowa community college. I want to stand up and fight for people so that they can not just get by, but they can get ahead and they can stay ahead. It's all part of her campaign strategy to make her more engaging and accessible. This time around, she's taking no vote for granted. Florida Senator Marco Rubio is back to work today after launching his own bid for the White House last night. He had to share the spotlight with Clinton, but he used it to his advantage, keying off of her announcement video. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. Her ideas to help everyday Americans will not help everyday Americans. Jeb Bush isn't officially in the race yet, but he's looming large over the Republican field, especially Rubio, who considers the former Florida governor to be a mentor. I'm not running against Jeb Bush, and I hope he's not running against me. We are competing for the same job. Hillary Clinton's back at it again tomorrow, touring a small business outside Des Moines, Iowa, and holding a roundtable. This is what her campaign will look like until she kicks off those traditional rallies sometime next month. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. Up next here at 7, some amazing video. See how police stopped an armed suspect firing his weapon in the middle of a crime spree. Plus success and failure today for Hawthorne-based SpaceX, the successful rocket launch, and what didn't go as planned. And actress Rita Wilson raises awareness about the importance of getting a second opinion with a very personal and public blog. How a second opinion may have saved her life.
heart-stopping video to show you tonight. An Arizona police officer uses his police cruiser to take down a suspect. We warn you, the video can be difficult to watch. And believe it or not, the suspect survived. ABC's Mara Schiavocampo reports. Tonight, newly released police dash cam video, Arizona police pursuing a man they say was a suspect in several thefts, including allegedly stealing a rifle. The video shows the suspect, Mario Valencia, as he walks down the street firing a gun. All right, one round just went out. Officers keeping their distance. Then, suddenly, a second cruiser speeds by, driving onto the sidewalk, slamming into the suspect. This video from the other car's dash cam with a cracked windshield from the impact. This incident took place in February. The suspect was hospitalized for two days before being arrested and booked. He's facing charges ranging from aggravated assault to shoplifting with a firearm. The Marana police chief says that ramming a suspect is not usual protocol and is grateful that everyone is okay. Mara Schiavocampo, ABC News, New York. An authentic Italian espresso machine is on its way to the International Space Station. The Falcon soars from its perch toward the International Space Station. SpaceX blasted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida, carrying thousands of pounds of supplies and other equipment. That included that espresso machine for Italian astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti. She had grown tired of drinking instant coffee. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk tweeted these photos saying the rocket descended successfully and was able to land on the ship. But the impact was too intense for the craft to be used again. Yesterday's scheduled launch was postponed because of bad weather. You have to have your cappuccino in the morning. No substitutes, right? Even in space. All right. Well, we have some dangerous winds in the forecast. Let's head over to Danny Romero now for a check on weather. All right. Thanks very much, Ruta Bay. And Mark, we've got the wind, certainly part of our weather picture already, kicking up in some areas. We're going to show you where the wind warnings are in effect. The high wind warnings are these gold areas in effect already for a Morongo Basin up around the desert areas, Santa Clarita Valley, until 3 p.m. Thursday afternoon. We're seeing this all part of our weather picture. L.A. County Mountains also in effect till Thursday afternoon. These high winds are with those 60 mile per hour gusts, very dangerous winds up around the high desert as well. With Antelope Valley, we're seeing that high wind warning in effect now through, Thursday, or through Wednesday morning. Again, strong winds, 60 mile per hour gusts. Now, the less uh, strong winds, but still could be dangerous. Are these areas in the base color? These are the wind advisory level winds. These kick in tomorrow morning about 3 a.m., go through Thursday afternoon for all areas here in the beige color. That means winds in that 25 to 35 mile per hour range with gusts in that 40, 50 mile per hour range. So still they could be pretty dangerous winds. So it's the winds really concerned about the most and of course the very, very dry conditions. Now, visually, Things look great. Here's our Irvine Spectrum camera live in HD. Uh, the marine layer we had the last few days cleared out. Clouds will be scarce, certainly, over the next few days. Things are going to be so, so dry. So Irvine Spectrum looking clear right now. Downtown LA, clear skies as well. And the temps, pretty mild right now. We're looking at 65 degrees at the moment. Just barely a breeze downtown of 5 miles per hour. Expect more of those by tomorrow. Humidity at 61%. We're seeing barometer holding steady now at 29.95. I want to show you the winds are working now. tonight by 11 p.m. Most of those winds are coming out of the north, but watch what happens overnight into tomorrow morning. We're going to see those winds now turn more northeasterly. Those are the true Santa Ana winds coming out of the northeast, turning back around. So by tomorrow afternoon, blowing pretty strong all the way from the inland spots, strong up to the coastal areas as well. So we're going to see the winds as part of a weather picture for a couple of days now. And again, very strong, dangerous winds and very, very dry conditions as well as the temps will start to jump over the next few days. So enjoy one more mild night over the area of 52 in Riverside, 42 Palmdale and night down 36 in Lancaster. Pretty cold there in Fraser Park as well, 35. High tomorrow again, the heat going, heating up the winds towards the coast. So 81 at Malibu, 81 at Redondo Beach. Inland temps 78 for Santa Clarita, 72 at Palmdale. But we will see warm temps in the Inland Empire. 83 for Riverside, 82 for Beaumont. We look ahead now. Seven days. Power back. Your weather shows you those gusty winds of 45 miles per hour for LA Metro and Orange County for the next couple of days. And then still breezy and warm on Friday. Then here comes the cooling down. The marine layer returns. And by the end of the weekend, the morning clouds are back in place. Numbers get down to out there. Should be 73, 72 degrees. Valleys in the Inland Empire, strong gusty winds, 60 mile per hour gusts. These are dangerous. Dangerous winds tomorrow, still pretty strong Thursday into Friday, and then the temps jump up to the 90s on Friday. A little drop down to the 80s for Saturday and Sunday on the weekend, and then even more so with those morning clouds back on Monday and Tuesday. The beaches, wow, look at this. 
80s tomorrow and Thursday at the coast. Even 77, not bad on Friday. Now the sea breeze and the marine layer returns by the end of the weekend. We'll see temps back to the 60s at the coast with sunshine maybe later in the day. With our mountain areas, very windy and gusty winds strong there. Cold at night, down in the 20s there. Daytime numbers clear, bright and sunny 60s. And the high desert, strong winds we're talking about there too. We're seeing those really windy winds, uh, windy conditions tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday as well. Temps climbing back up to the 80s through the weekend. A little cool down next week, Monday and Tuesday. All right, Rudabay and Mark, go ahead. Thanks, Danny. Another celebrity comes forward to share her health story in hopes of helping others. Actress Rita Wilson was told her test did not reveal cancer, but a second opinion may have saved her life. Health specialist Denise Sador has Wilson's message for other women. Much of what we see of Rita Wilson is on the red carpet, film, and stage. Now the 58-year-old actress is shining the spotlight on something very personal. She's recovering after undergoing a bilateral mastectomy for breast cancer. She shared her statement with People magazine and says she's expected to make a full recovery after doctors discovered she had invasive lobular carcinoma. It's what I call a sneaky cancer. It's very hard to detect on a mammogram. Invasive lobular carcinoma accounts for about 15% of breast cancer cases. But it's not the diagnosis that's making news, it's how the actress arrived at the diagnosis. Wilson, who already has a condition that puts her into a higher risk for breast cancer, was getting monitored. But initial breast biopsies found no signs of cancer. But she credits a friend for convincing her to seek a second opinion. A second pathologist discovered the cancer, then a third confirmed the results. UCLA's Dr. Deanna Atai says in these situations, patients should ask many questions, including whether the pathologist reading the results specializes in breast cancer. There are a lot of gray areas in pathology, and sometimes some of the changes in the cells are subject to interpretation. On her Facebook page, Wilson says a second opinion is necessary and vital, not just by another doctor, by another pathologist. I'm well and getting stronger every day. Wilson's doctors also discovered an underlying condition called pleomorphic carcinoma in situ. It's an abnormal growth of cells that may or may not lead to cancer. Dr. Atai says she always encourages patients to get a second opinion. It's your body, it's your peace of mind, and you need to get the answers that you need so that you feel comfortable with the treatments that are recommended. One consideration patients may not realize is that a second pathologist's opinion has cost, just like a second opinion from a cancer specialist. And whether or not any of it is covered by insurance depends on different carriers and different individual plans. In the newsroom, Denise Tudor, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Up next, a Texas woman gives birth to the first all-female quintuplet in the country, how they're making history around the world. Plus, we're learning just how an airline worker got trapped in the belly of an airliner. And protesters taking a stand on vaccines, what they want the L.A. school board to know about a new bill requiring vaccination.
Tonight we're hearing what it sounded like to passengers when a worker got caught in an airplane's cargo hold. That was the sound captured on a passenger's cell phone as the worker pounded on the cargo hold and shouted for help. The Alaska Airlines flight en route to Los Angeles had to turn around and make an emergency landing back at the Seattle airport. Once it did, the man walked out of the front of the cargo hold. He told investigators he had crawled in there to take a nap. The plane was in the air for 14 minutes. He was not hurt. This part of the hold was pressurized and the temperature controlled. So uh, no word yet on whether, though, he will keep his job. A first for the U.S., a set of all-female quintuplets has been born. That hasn't happened anywhere in the world since 1969. The Busby family from Houston, Texas, is chronicling their lives in a blog entitled, It's a Buzz World. Adam and Danielle Busby already have a daughter, Blake. The quints were delivered by C-section at 28 weeks and two days last Wednesday. The parents say each newborn has a distinct personality. Danielle had intrauterine insemination for both pregnancies. We are updating the evening's top stories next here at 7.30. Including high wind watches and warnings in parts of Southern California. Danny shows us which areas will see the most violent gusts. And he was caught on video shooting an unarmed man in the back. Now what the 73-year-old reserve sheriff deputy is facing. Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News at 7.30 p.m. on LA 56.
Our top story at 7.30, dangerous winds blowing through Southern California. I'm Mark Brown, in for David Ono. I'm Rudy Shavazi, in for Colleen Sullivan. This is Eyewitness News on LA 56, LA's only live local newscast at 7 p.m. The Santa Ana winds are back, creating warm and gusty conditions. The high desert is already seeing its fair share of wind, with more on the way later tonight. Some areas could even see winds of up to 60 miles per hour. As a precaution, the Los Angeles Fire Department will pre-deploy additional resources to select high hazard brush areas. Danny Romero is in now for Jonathan Novak with more on those dangerous conditions. Danny? Uh, thanks, Ruta Bay and Mark. Yeah, the conditions, great word to use because besides the winds being a factor, and they certainly are, it will also be those very low humidities. So, red flag warnings are up and in effect in these rose-colored areas. So, these red flag warnings go into effect tomorrow morning, uh, you know, basically overnight, until Thursday evening here for Ventura County Valleys. We're also seeing those red flag warnings kicking in tomorrow morning for L.A. County as well, towards the mountain spots. Also, red flag warnings in effect. All the rose-colored areas have those red flag warnings. Also, the winds are strong. We mentioned those. And those high winds, those are the ones to watch out for. The very uh, dangerous winds, 60 mile per hour gusts, are in these gold areas. High wind warnings in effect. Now till Thursday afternoon at 3 p.m. up around the high desert as well. High wind warnings till Wednesday morning at 3 a.m. Strong winds, dry conditions, a Santa Ana event. How long it lasts, I'll tell you when I come back on the seven day. In just a bit right now, Ruta Bay and Mark, all yours. Okay, thank you very much, Danny. Uh, another big story tonight, the Metropolitan Water District Board voting today to cut back future water deliveries by 15%. It'll take effect on the 1st of July. Eyewitness News reporter Carlos Granda has more on the impact of the decision and how it could lead to a spike in water rates for customers. In just two years, the Metropolitan Water District's reserves dropped by half. Today, the board voted to cut back future water deliveries by 15 percent. This is uh, a difficult time, and it is, uh, as you've heard, a record drought. This will affect 19 million people from Ventura to the Mexico border. The MWD supplies water to agencies like the DWP, Orange County, and others across Southern California. A 15% cutback is about 300,000 acre feet of water. That's enough for 600,000 families for a year. Last time we did it in 2008, 2009, we asked Southern Californians to cut 10%, and Southern Californians did. They actually cut about 16, 17 percent. Keitlinger says most consumers already use high efficiency toilets and low flow shower heads. It now comes to this outdoor water use. There isn't that much flexibility left inside the house. People are going to have to do things like remove lawns to make this cut. And so this one will be harder. But some members feel it's not enough. They wanted a 20 percent reduction. It's like spending down our savings account and hoping to win the lottery to pay it back. And I just don't feel like I can be as sure as some people are that we're going to be okay. Under the proposal, the water district would implement penalties that could be passed along as higher rates to consumers. Some like Maria Duenas, who has this drought-tolerant yard, are getting the message. We're watering once a week, and uh, we use some items like this. And uh, we are conserving water. I'm Carlos Granda, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Breaking news to tell you about in Glendale, a brush fire has broken out. This is of concern as the weather starts to change and get more dry and windy. Let's get more from Bill Thomas in Air 7 HD. Oh, I'm sorry. He is. Uh, we have a helicopter over the sea now. It is Air 7 HD, but no Bill Thomas. You see the quick work being made of this fire. Elements of Glendale Fire Department, and I'm not sure who just made that drop. It could have been an L.A. County Fire helicopter. Yes, L.A. County Fire involved, and they just put the, looked like the coup de gras there knocking out that last bit of uh, fire. This uh, was one acre that broke out in Glendale at uh, the intersection of Linda Vista and Figueroa. Uh, we're told uh, there's a big park right near there, but it looks like the fire is essentially out now. The crews will stay on to make, put out any hot spots, but uh, they did jump on this with both feet very quickly, Rudabay. All right, thanks, Mark. L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti delivered his State of the City address this afternoon, focusing on earthquake preparedness, the growing labor crisis, and the state's record drought. In fact, Garcetti says, Garcetti says L.A. is leading the way on Governor Brown's mandatory 25% water cut. Governor, I can report to you today that with just 10% of the state's population, Los Angeles will reach half of your entire statewide goal by the end of this year. 
Mayor Garcetti says the state of our city is strong. Among other announcements today, he confirmed that rideshare companies like Uber and Lyft will soon be able to pick you up at LAX. Ten million more dollars for affordable housing and five thousand new trash cans. Some local parents vented their anger today over plans to sharply limit vaccine waivers for school children. Senate Bill 277 has brought out opponents in droves. They're upset. They say it could ban children who haven't been immunized from school, public and private. Eyewitness News reporter Miriam Hernandez reports from downtown L.A. the site of today's rally. We, the parents, have the right. Choice on vaccination. Parents protesting pending legislation say it's a constitutional issue to access public education without subjecting their children to inoculations. How suspicious are they of pharmaceutical companies and doctors? With every vaccination, there's a risk of death. And, yeah, it says right on the um, vaccine insert. And uh, normally the doctors don't tell you what the side effects are. Have the this crowd from L.A. and Orange County was mobilized by the group Million Moms, which has already sounded off against SB 277 in Sacramento. The bill aims to eliminate a parent's option to get a vaccination exemption based on personal belief. Public health officials say without closing the loophole, there is a risk of spreading measles and whooping cough in classrooms. Authoring a resolution in support, LAUSD school member Tamar Gallatin. We've already seen one measles, a number of whooping cough cases in our, our district. I'm hearing from a, a lot of medical per professionals, especially doctors and nurses, who are, are telling me how important this is. Yet these parents believe their evidence is just as compelling. Can you imagine anything that would change your mind? Nothing, absolutely nothing. If I have to do jail time, God forbid. If I have to homeschool my kids, would, I would not vaccinate on their schedule. They face firm resolve in Sacramento, where legislators already passed the bill through the health committee unanimously. The million moms say they are far from finished. The LAUSD resolution is expected to pass with little or no objection. As for the moms, many are headed to Sacramento, where the education committee will vote on AB 277 tomorrow. Reporting from downtown Los Angeles, Miriam Hernandez, ABC7 Eyewitness News. The head of the Drug Enforcement Administration was on the hot seat today in Washington, D.C. Michelle Leonhardt went before a congressional committee to explain why she couldn't fire DEA agents who took part in sex parties in Colombia with prostitutes. The allegations involved conduct that happened between 2000 and 2001 and 2012. Is it wrong for prostitutes be, to be in government housing? Well, first of all, it's deplorable behavior by those agents. But is it a violation of policy? It's absolutely a violation. Some agents were given light punishments, including between two and a 14-day suspension without pay. But civil service protections made it hard for Leonhardt to make, take more significant disciplinary action. A 73-year-old reserve sheriff's deputy who admitted to mistakenly shooting a suspect was booked today on manslaughter. The volunteer deputy was on an undercover operation when he says he pulled his gun thinking it was a stun gun and killed the suspect. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has the story. Turning himself into police today. We will defend this in the court of law. Volunteer Reserve Tulsa Sheriff's Deputy Robert Bates, charged with second degree manslaughter for this. Oh, I shot him. I'm sorry. The shooting death of unarmed suspect Eric Harris in what Bates claims was an accident. Stop right here. Harris was running after investigators say he tried to sell drugs and a gun to an undercover officer. Just a loser. Bates says after chasing Harris down, roll on your stomach. He shot what he thought was his taser, but instead fired his gun. He knew that he erred. He knew that he used a deadly force instead of less lethal. Many wondering why the 73-year-old was involved in such a high-risk operation. Bates works as an insurance executive and has been a volunteer with the department since 2008. I think that's going to become part of the defense. Is he's going to say, look, you know, I didn't do this regularly. Yes, I had training, but this is the sort of mistake, innocent mistake, someone like me could make. Prosecutors are going to say, not so innocent. That's the sentiment of Harris's family. There's no way an officer can get this confused for this. Saying today the manslaughter charge brings them one step closer to justice and healing. And Bates was released on $25,000 bond. He's expected to be in court next week. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, New York.
A next startling video of a wrong way driver you have to see to believe. 11 miles in the wrong direction on three different highways. You'll see what happened next. Plus, educators involved in a cheating scandal get a big legal lesson. The judge's angry words coming up. That's some terrifying video to show you now. A wrong way driver caught on camera. This incident generated plenty of calls to 911. The driver covered 11 miles going in the wrong direction the whole time. ABC's Gio Benitez has the dash camera video from the police officer who went head on to stop her. Watch and listen. Panic on the highway. TPS 911. There's a wrong way driver. He got a wrong way driver. I just saw the lights coming towards me. We almost had a head on collision. A 22 year old Arizona woman allegedly driving more than 11 miles on three different highways, all going the wrong way against traffic. A quick thinking officer ready to collide with the wrong way driver until. It's 11. I got him stopped. She stops, avoiding a crash. Each year, wrong-way crashes kill more than a 1,000 people. Watch what happens with this school bus carrying 40 children in Oklahoma. And this police officer slamming his own car to stop a wrong-way driver in Tennessee. Again, that was ABC's Gio Benitez reporting that 22-year-old Arizona woman has been charged with driving under the influence. Nine former public school educators in Atlanta have been sentenced to jail for their roles in a cheating conspiracy to inflate student scores. They are among nearly three dozen educators indicted following an investigation that found answers on standardized tests were either fed to students beforehand or erased and changed after tests were turned in. The judge delayed sentencing yesterday, encouraging the convicted to reach plea deals. Eight did not, and the judge, clearly appalled by their actions, issued sentences ranging from one to seven years in jail. There were thousands of children that were harmed in this thing. This is not a victimless crime that occurred. There was whole-scale cheating going on in the Atlanta public schools. Many of the indicted teachers pleaded guilty before the case went to trial. Those sentenced today will be allowed to remain out of jail on bond while they appeal. Danny Romero has our windy forecast up next. Plus, an Australian golfer talked about his shocking discovery when searching for his ball in a water hazard. And meets some really talented local teenagers. They're building robots and they're doing it so well they're dreaming of a national championship. Stay with us.
Not everyone sold on the drone craze going on right now. Take this chimpanzee at a zoo in the Netherlands, for instance. He keeps getting buzzed by a drone, so he got himself a stick, smashed that drone, and knocked it out of the air. Once the drone hit the ground, the chimp approached it, looked it over, maybe to make sure he really killed it, then casually sauntered away. The drone was being used for a TV show shoot. The whole thing was sort of like a bad paparazzi encounter, Animal Kingdom style. He showed that drone. <laughs> uh, all right, Danny Romero is in for Jonathan Novak and take another look at our weather. Danny. Yeah, love that little uh, guy going there, man. Went all Sean Penn on that thing, didn't he? Like, bam! Take care of you, paparazzo. Uh, here's the story. We've got just a gorgeous sunset I want to show you first. Our Angeles National Forest, you know, sunset officially, oh, about 20 minutes or so ago. But, man, my man Jay just giving you a great shot there of the sun setting on the horizon in the upper elevations. Beautiful shot. Downtown L.A. looking good tonight, too. Clear skies. We're going to stay pretty clear the next couple of days. 65 degrees, our temp at the moment. 61% relative humidity. That will be dropping quite a bit, too. Today, right where we should be as far as the temperature is concerned, 73. At sunset, I mentioned 724 officially. Sunrise tomorrow at 6. 22, getting your day going. Let me show you the winds going right now. You can see them mostly northerly right now. Still strong winds in some areas. We've got those warnings up I showed you a while ago. But by tomorrow, we're going to see things start to change around with those winds. We're going to see them change direction, become a little stronger. Now, more out of the northeast by tomorrow on these winds, cooling that, have that cool air from the north, and then bring it in, warm it up as it goes to the coast. So we're going to see temperatures Thursday and Friday even at the beaches to the 70s and 80s quite warm. In fact, even warmer than some of the inland areas, the high desert where those winds are going to originate. Then Thursday, still some pretty strong winds, although it's starting to wind down somewhat by late Thursday afternoon. The temperatures are going to be quite nice over the area. We're going to see numbers be very mild tonight again, and then we're going to see have some very clear nights and very clear afternoons with afternoon numbers quite high. So nighttime numbers pretty mild tonight, 40s for Palmdale and Santa Clarita, 50s in Encino and Northridge. Then tomorrow, as I mentioned, kind of cooler air at 72 at Palmdale, but 81 by the time it warms up, getting out to Malibu, 80 in Thousand Oaks. We'll see an 85 for Long Beach Inland, though. We will see some 80s around San Bernardino at 82, Temecula at 84. Now we look ahead, seven-day power back weather. Watch this. Gusty winds, Wednesday and Thursday. We're seeing numbers in those 80 to 87 range, the hottest day Thursday. Starting to drop back down as the winds died down Friday, and by Saturday, more cooling and back down near more normal temps, 73, 72 by next Monday and Tuesday. The valleys, the Inland Empire, with no cloud cover in place. It's just the winds blowing strong, 60 mile per hour gust and warm, warm temps, 80s to the 90s on Friday in the valleys, and then dropping down to 84, and then more so by Sunday into Monday, it's 80s and upper to mid. 70s by Monday and Tuesday. The beaches, look at this story. 80s tomorrow, 83 on Thursday, still pretty warm on Friday. Look for this to be really nice into the weekend, but by the weekend, now at the end, marine layer returns. Morning clouds, afternoon sunshine late in the day, so temps will only get up to the 60s by next Sunday and Monday and Tuesday. So get your beach time in before the weekend gets here. Mountain areas, again, windy but cooler to start. 50s for Wednesday and Thursday. And then as the winds die down Friday and into the weekend, the temperatures start to drop, uh, rise back up to the 64, 65 range, taking that into next Monday and Tuesday. High deserts, strong, gusty winds and temps in the 70s. The winds die down. The temps jump up to 83 and to 80 on the Saturday and into Sunday as well, with temperatures coming down to 78 and 75 by next Monday and Tuesday. So enjoy that weather, but be ready for it. Tomorrow, the heat and the dry is with us. Mark and Ruder Bay, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Danny. Now we're going to do some sports. Some say the Floyd Mayweather Manny Pacquiao fight is five years too late. But both fighters are still in the, t the top two pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. Now we're just 18 days away from the fight of the century to go down. Today in Las Vegas, media filled up the Floyd Mayweather gym for Money Way Mayweather's open workout. Manny Pacquiao will hold his tomorrow at the Wild Card Gym in Hollywood. The May 2nd fight will unify the welterweight championship. And the bookmakers list Mayweather as a favorite at minus 210. <laughs> Um, a fighter that has a lot to do, and um, like I said before, I had a uh, tremendous career, you know, 19 years, 18 years before I had this, and my team, you know, I, I commit my team, take my hat off to my team, they, my team done a remarkable job, you know, outside the ring, while I continue to, you know, get inside the ring and take care of business. And there's a reason they call a body of water on a golf course a water hazard. 
A golfer lost his ball in a pond on a course in Australia when he was bitten by this crocodile. 75-year-old John Layup was hospitalized with puncture wounds in his leg. He's going to be okay. But there were signs near the pond warning golfers of the presence of crocodiles. I drove the cart around there to retrieve the ball. And um, I didn't see the croc sun bacon just on the edge of the water. And I walked past it and then it got me on the way back. Got him on the way back. Rangers have tried to remove the crocodile from the golf course, but Layoff says the, the croc should stay put because it was his fault for not heeding the warning signs. Some innovative local students are gearing up, literally, for quite a futuristic fight. The Monrovia High School robotics team is heading to the FTC World Championship robotics competition for the second year in a row. And as Eyewitness News reporter Amy Powell shows us, they need some help to get there. Sir Lancelot is practicing his moves, getting ready to compete in the Robotics World Championships next week in St. Louis. The robot was built by a team of 10 Monrovia High School students, nicknamed the Kings and Queens. They're still refining their robotic night in preparation for the big event. Moving pretty smoothly, uh, going up and down properly, just the, the final scoring element. The robot will have to complete a series of challenges that involve picking up wiffle balls and launching them into tubes and moving up and down a ramp. And you can basically now build it out of any parts uh, like um, natural materials. Uh, we are personally made out of a lot of aluminum and steel and plastic. Senior Melissa Johnson will be Lancelot's driver. It's like a dance between, you know, man and machine, like the robot has to perform, but I also have to perform, like just the robot by itself can't win. The Monrovia team will be going up against 127 other international teams. And Sir Lancelot really has to be battle ready. He has to compete against 63 other teams in his division just to advance to the next level. Monrovia's team made it to the World Championships with a different robot last year and was one of only 42 teams earning the right to come back this year. It will cost about $12,000 to make the trip. They're about $3,000 short and have started a GoFundMe account. They'd like to win, but that's not the only goal. To uphold basically our team name for our freshmen so that they have something to be proud of and to carry on next year. Amy Powell, ABC7 Eyewitness News. More news straight ahead here at 7.30 and ahead tonight on Eyewitness News at 11 on ABC7. Hawthorne's mayor has come under fire for his spending practices. Angry residents sound off tonight at the city council meeting, which is underway right now. Plus, how Netflix is making it easier for its visually impaired users to enjoy one of its original series. These stories and all the late-breaking news on Southern California's number one late newscast, Eyewitness News at 11 on ABC7.
It's free cone day at Ben and Jerry's. Sounds like a perfect sweet treat for a Tuesday. The ice cream company is serving up free scoops at its locations around the world until, oh, 8 o'clock tonight. So you have a minute left. Ben and Jerry's started free cone day back in 1979 to thank its customers. It's now an annual event. The best part, no limit. You can go back for seconds, thirds, and fourths. Ben and Jerry's estimates it will give away more than a million free scoops this year. You have exactly 45 seconds now. 45 seconds. You can do it. And some new technology is putting local homebound students in class and on campus. It's thanks to the Vigo system, which was demonstrated today during the LA Unified School District board meeting. Using the system, students with health problems can pilot a robot around campus. They can speak, see, and ask and answer questions and also change locations. Vigo allows the students to access instruction and to socialize with other students in real time. Thanks for joining us for Eyewitness News at 7.30 on LA 56. Law and Order SBU is next here on LA 56. Have a great night. This is ABC7 Weather with Danny Romero. Well, hot and dry conditions in place for us thanks to this ridge of high pressure giving us this very, very strong offshore flow. So as this high stays in place and locked in into the weekend, we're going to see the winds come out of the north and the east and then just warm up as they head towards the coast. So we're going to see some very warm temps on the beach areas and still pretty sunny uh, numbers on the inland areas as well, but really uh, dry, windy conditions ahead of us next few days. LA Metro Orange County, seven-day power back. Weather shows you those gusty winds and those temps rising up to 80.